welcome to my quick tutorial on how to trigger MIDI from audio in Cubase. You may have seen my episode one of the quick metal mixing tips where I did the opposite, where I showed you using Groove Agent how you can trigger an audio sample from MIDI. And one of my subs asked, well, how can we then trigger MIDI from audio? And that has always been a problem in Cubase. Now, if you are looking at this video and you have something like a stereo drum track with a full drum kit and you want some answers on how to convert that to MIDI, I'm afraid this isn't the place and I'm afraid Cubase isn't the place to do it either. You would need to buy some professional software like Drumagog to use within Cubase to sort that out for you. What I can show you though is when we've got our instruments on a separate tracks, like here you can see I've got the kick, the snare and some hats just for an example. I will show you how we can translate that into MIDI so you can, as we're going to show in the example here, double up on the snare to make it nice and fat by using some MIDI triggering. Now the problem people run into on Cubase is that although there is a function to extract MIDI from audio, it works on pitch. And even though some instruments or some drums do have a pitch as such, Cubase's algorithms don't recognize them. So we'll come on to looking at an example of that shortly. But first of all, let's just have a look at the drums we're working with. I've got a simple kick, snare and hats as audio files here. We'll just have a quick listen. OK, I think you can agree the snare's pretty weak there. So what we want to do is add in another snare sound to, to beef that up a lot. And I've set up already here a superior drummer instance and a very roomy reverby snare there to add in so we can trigger that from our snare audio and turn it into a really nice full on snare. Now, because you do have to buy something like Drumagog, which I believe is about $80, $90, which is about £60, to extract drum data from programs like Cubase. I know some, some packages, I think Pro Tools has a way of doing it nice and simply, uh, which is great, but for us Cubase users, uh, I've come up with a way of getting the drum data. As long as you've got your tracks separated, then it's not going to be too difficult. There are a few steps, so bear with me on this, but it does work and it will save you the money of having to buy something like Drumagog if you don't want to do that or you don't have to do this on a particularly regular basis. It can also be used for other techniques as well for any sort of triggering this this will hopefully teach you some good good tricks to use. Now it's going to involve using a side chain and I won't go through setting that up here. I covered that in my last video which was episode one of quick metal mixing tips. Check that out if you need some more explanation on that but otherwise let's jump right in. My snare audio here, as you can see, very obvious where the snare peaks. On the left hand side of this window, there's a vary audio option. And if we click on the pitch and warp, it tries to examine the snare and see what the pitch is, which you can see it doesn't do a very good job. It's struggling to note what the pitch is. It's getting them an octave or more apart. And in some instances, as we go along, it's even missing it out. So this would be no good for extracting any data from. Down the bottom left here under functions, you can see an extract MIDI. This works pretty well for audio that's easily pitched, but as you can see, it's a disaster for drums. So what we're going to do is sidechain this snare to a signal generator like we did with the kick in my other episode that I mentioned. By the way, I'm going to put an annotation for this video on screen now. So if you need that sidechain tutorial, follow that link. Once that's done, the uh, snare is going to produce a tone similar the, to the way the kick did, and we're going to use that tone to produce the MIDI. So we can close this window now because it's not helping us at the moment. What you would need to do for step one is set up an FX or auxiliary track, as I've done down there. And if we have a look at it there, I've set up a test tone generator and a gate to form a side chain exactly the same way as I did with the kick in the other video. The only difference being I've set the hertz here to a particular pitch 220 is a low a is a very definite pitch and is one that the cupes pitch uh, algorithms will pick up easily so set this to whatever you want but make sure it's a definite pitch 220 440 there they're both good ones to go with so snare track here if we have a look has now ascend going to that side chain and it's extremely important that it's set to pre-fader because what you want to do for step two 
is reduce the volume of the snare to zero. If we now mute everything except for our snare and the FX channel and press play, what you should just hear is the pulse of the 220 hertz or whatever hertz you set. That's the test signal coming through in place of the snare. Once you've confirmed that you've only got the pulse coming through, set your region for the whole song or whatever bit you want to create your MIDI from and go into File and Export Audio Mix Down in the same way you do when you're bouncing anything down and just bounce down that pulse. So what we're left with, I've skipped that step for ease of the tutorial, we're left with now an audio pulse that's exactly the same rhythm as the snare. And if I click on the Vary Audio here, and activate it, you can see Cubase has easily picked out the pitch now. So what we have is an easily definable pitch that's an exact rhythm with the snare. And now, under functions, when I extract the MIDI, and you can accept the defaults and set it to a new MIDI track, that's fine. Close this and have a look down the bottom. We now have an exact MIDI replica of that snare couple of very simple steps remaining really. Firstly, this is not set to the correct pitch for the snare that I want to activate in Superior Drummer, so I will select it all and just move it down. I happen to know that my snare is on D1, but uh, you may need to check that. What you would do in something like Superior Drummer is open it up, look at your mapping, and I can quite happily see there that D1 is for my snare. I would then also make sure that isn't uh, muted and make sure it's going to superior drama which it, it's defaulted to anyway that's great i'll mute my snare pulse because i don't want that obviously i've got my snare uh, i'll mute the fx channel because i don't want that side chain working anymore i need to bring the volume of my snare back up and let's just turn off that side chain just to make sure as well if i now play this for you we should have really nice snare and midi snare playing at the same time and i'll bring in the kick in the hats as well just give you some context there we go that's a perfect way of extracting midi from something like a drum it would work just as well for the hats again if we give a quick example you can see absolutely terrible the way cubase tries to uh, extract from that so it works really well to create a side chain. For something like Hatch, you may have to set your gate settings a bit differently. Other than that, it would uh, work pretty well. And that's it. Very effective way of converting audio that it doesn't have a pitch, such as a drum, into a MIDI signal so that you can double up and get really nice heavy drum sounds in Cubase.